Good morning and welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church on this Sunday, November 28th, the first Sunday of Advent. So glad that you're all here this morning. We're also glad for those who could join on our live stream this morning. You can find the bulletin for the service in the uh, link in the description of the video. Please stand as you are able. Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lighting of the Advent week. Begin the season of Advent with expectant and believing hearts. We wait upon the Lord and place our hope in God's word. During Advent, we confront the darkness that so often exists around us. 
we wait upon the Lord and place our hope in God's word. During Advent, we confront the doubt that so often resides within us. We wait upon the Lord and place our hope in God's word. During Advent, we confront the division that so often occurs between us. We wait upon the Lord and place our hope in God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read our psalm responsibly by half verse. You can find the psalm in your bulletin. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. But do not be humiliated. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in your schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. For they are Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. And teaches his way to the Lord. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. To those who keep his covenant. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Thessalonica. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As is our Advent tradition, we will sing each week two stanzas from O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And I invite you to stand and sing along with us. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Very fitting that the most hopeful season of the Christian calendar begins during the darkest time of our year. With daylight savings time being over about a month ago, and sunrise happened at 7 o'clock this morning, and sunset is supposed to happen around quarter to 5, it seems like at this time of year, most of us leave for work in the dark, and we leave to go home in the dark as well. And I don't know about you, but those cold mornings of, of late fall and early winter can make it really hard to, to want to get out of bed, this morning included. 
And so for me, this, this morning when we lit the first candle on our Advent wreath, it seems like a moment, uh, not a moment too soon. I really look forward to Advent this year um, because last year we weren't able to spend Advent together. And that warm glow of the Advent wreath reminds me that this is a time for joy and love, preparation, expectation. It's a time of hope. And we as humans, I think we hope for all manner of things. Every year since my wife and I have been together, we've gotten an Advent calendar to mark this season. And every year, it's been a Lego Star Wars Advent calendar. <laughs> well, this year, we decided to change it up a little bit. After all, I am maturing. My children are getting older. So it was time to get an Advent calendar that more reflected who we were as a family rather than just my personal interest. And so this year, we got the Lego Marvel Advent calendar. <laughs> And it was a calendar that my son had hoped for. And if I'm honest, it was a calendar that I had secretly hoped for as well. <laughs> now, as Christians who observe Advent the way we do, we do mark time differently than the rest of society that have the time from Thanksgiving or, or maybe even Halloween, as it seems to get earlier and earlier each year. We take that time and the whole month of December as a sort of countdown to Christmas and the end of the year. In fact, our Lego Marvel Advent calendar doesn't really mark the liturgical season of Advent at all. Instead, it counts down the month of December. My son had hoped to start opening the little doors on the calendar tonight, but alas, we can't until the 1st of December, or which happens on Wednesday, or we would run out of doors before Christmas Eve. Now, you try explaining that the calendar doesn't actually mark Advent, but rather December to an overexcited six-year-old who, like his father, loves Spider-Man and is ready to fight his father to open the little doors and put the Legos together. So instead of counting down, you know, our Sundays in Advent are really about counting forward. Counting forward to a time that begins with our remembrance of the birth of Christ. In Advent, we celebrate the fact that God is still working throughout time. And we see movement toward the fulfillment of the kingdom of God here on earth. We reaffirm our trust in God's promises throughout Advent, those promises that were made in the past, in the present, and in the future. And our readings for this morning have us looking at all three of those. Now, the prophet Jeremiah in our Old Testament reading proclaims his vision of a reunified and a prosperous people. And that vision couldn't have been any further from what the people of Israel were actually going through at that time. Jeremiah makes his prophecy during a critical time in the lives of the Israelites. Jeremiah himself is actually under arrest and in prison when he gives this vision. The Israelites are going through a political and a, na and a national disaster. The people of the kingdom of Judah had, had long broken their end of the covenant with God. And they've done it time and time and time again. And now judgment is finally upon them. Nebuchadnezzar and his forces are invading the kingdom of Judah. And Jeremiah's message of it's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets any better, people. That's what landed him in jail. But in the midst of this violence and darkness... And doom and gloom, Jeremiah has this message of hope for his people, for God's people. He says that God has promised to be faithful to God's people. He's done that from the very beginning of time, and God's promise will stand forever. Even during this time of darkness, defeat, God's faithfulness will yet be written in the hearts of God's people. And as the Israelites begin the to recover from, from exile, and they start to redirect themselves toward the way of life that God wants for them, a new covenant will be written on their hearts, despite the fear that they now face. Jeremiah reminds them that God has been in the past and will continue to be in the future faithful. 
that the memory of their leader David will be recovered as a son of David's line will be restored to the throne. That God is relentlessly faithful, caring and chastening hearts through all manner of things. God is there. God will continue to be there now and in the future. Jeremiah's words offered hope in a time of great pain. Hope will come. And in the meantime, even though we are in a scary time and in a scary world, we aren't sure what's going to happen next. We wait and we persevere and we hope. Words that ring true every bit now as they did back in Jeremiah's time. And we might expect to hear about this son of David's line birth in our gospel reading for this morning. But that's not where we start. We'll get there eventually, but this morning we don't hear about the first coming of Jesus, but rather his anticipated second coming. That's going to happen at the end of the age. So we don't hear about a child lying in a manger, but rather more ominous signs. That all hell is breaking loose, as the message translation puts it. There will be distress among nations. People will be fainting from fear and foreboding. It is then, John writes, that his hearers will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud. And this will mark the beginning of the end and the end of the beginning. This is an example of the apocalyptic literature that I've been talking about for the past few weeks when we've been hearing from the book of Revelation. And this example is apocalyptic literature at its very best. But remember, apocalyptic literature is not meant to scare us. It's meant to give us hope in a time of trouble. So Luke is writing with a a deep sense that Christian discipleship is a kind of living in between, that first age and the next age. We're aware of Jesus. We're waiting for Jesus. We're coming to know this Jesus for whom we wait in the midst of an eventful, unpredictable, even tumultuous world. But we're doing so while waiting with hope, waiting to stand before the Christ, believing that that second coming will occur, yet we're not quite sure when that blessed event will actually happen. Look at that fig tree, Jesus tells his disciples. Its leaves will tell you when summer is already near. They are a sign. And in the same way, when we see a shift in the way the world is ordered, not towards violence, darkness, destruction, death, But instead we see a shift towards love, forgiveness, grace, hope. That's when we know God's kingdom is more fully here. Jesus, just like the prophet Jeremiah, is telling his disciples and telling us this morning that the world can be a very scary place. As if we need a reminder of that. But maybe what we do need a reminder of is that Christ also tells us that he has overcome the world. So we hear his message to wait, to persevere, to look to the future, to take heed in those promises that were made in the past because there is redemption in the future. And so we begin with those words of promise. We begin a brand new liturgical year. We're in year C. And we start off fresh. You know, not just on the liturgical calendar, but also in our hearts. We start off with a hope of promises worth living for. And of course, we know that those promises haven't completely come to pass yet. We still long for that day when all those promises will be fulfilled, and so we wait. Not for the day where we remember Christ's birth. We'll get there. But we wait for the day of Christ's return. Because Advent is is the season in which we remind ourselves to be prepared for that second coming. You know, when Paul wrote his letters to the Thessalonians in the very first century, he preached with absolute certainty that Christ's return was imminent. It's going to happen any minute, folks. And it would unite the people of God together. Yet over time, it, it became clear that Christ would not be returning as soon as Paul would have liked and Some 2,000-odd years later, we're still waiting for that second return. 
But Paul's letter still speaks to our living in preparation today. Paul's message of knowing, believing the good news of the coming kingdom of God, we find evidence of that kingdom in the world around us and in others. We get little glimpses of it. We see it. Our own faith in the kingdom of God finds expression when we see that kingdom in others, when we live it out in our own lives, when we rejoice in it, when we give thanks for those people and events that reveal that coming kingdom in front of our very eyes. Far too often, I think the kingdom of God is right there for us to look and see, but sometimes we forget we're looking for it and it passes right by us. The time to live with with a purpose, it's always there. The kingdom of God is always there. Abounding love and and strengthened hearts produce faithful, faithful living, not just amidst the anticipation of the second coming, not in the season of Advent only, but all times. Where we catch glimpses. When we celebrate that the kingdom of God is here on earth, while we wait forever long, we wait for that second coming and the completion of the kingdom of God. And so we do wait. As the countless generations of the faithful have waited before us, keeping the faith that God continues to remain steadfast in God's promises, in all of God's promises. And we wait with hope, with real hope with real knowledge and real love in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Please kneel as you are able for the prayers of the people. My brothers and sisters, may God strengthen your hearts in holiness. Trusting in God, let us pray, O come, O come, Emmanuel, be Be our our hope and our salvation. God, our hope, make us increase and abound in love for one another. Keep your church on the paths of love and faithfulness. O come, O come, Emmanuel, be our hope and our salvation. God, our hope, usher in your reign of justice and righteousness. May all the world know your peace and safety. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Be our hope in our salvation. God, our hope, you place signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Give us the eyes to see, the wisdom to prepare, 
and the faith to trust in you. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Be our hope and our salvation. God, our hope, under your reign, divisions are overcome, unity restored. Bring the people of this region, from city, village, and town, together in a spirit of love and respect. We thank you for those in the Fellowship of the Faith in our diocese, St. John's Church, Kingsville, Christ Church, Columbia, Church of Christ the King, Woodlawn, and in our Anglican cycle of prayer, our Companion Diocese of Puerto Rico and the Episcopal Anglican Church of Brazil. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Be our hope and our salvation. God, our hope, remember your compassion and love. Heal and restore the sick and the suffering, the anxious and the grieving, especially Marcel Bernard, Rankin Lusby, Joe, Donna Graves, Beth Nelson, Jean Santafonte Jensen, Tony Hoffer, Wayne Lockhart and the Lockhart family, Phil Hoagie, Eloise Hendrickson, Mary and Scott Vining, Loretta March, Leonard Tabor, May, Samuel, Alexandra, Jenny, Kelly Weaver, Kelsey, Boyd, Mel Sappington, Pat Cooper, Fran Sullivan, Mark, Alan, Jordan, Noah, and those we name with our lips or in our hearts. Those who have been deployed and put in harm's way to defend our country, and those who work for the safety of our communities and the security of our country. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Be our hope and our salvation. God, our hope, keep us blameless before you, that we may meet the coming of the Lord Jesus with joy. May we and all who have died rise to life immortal with all your saints. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Be our hope and our salvation. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. And God's peace be with those who are watching on our live stream this morning. So glad you could be with us. Please be seated for just a few brief announcements. First off, I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. I uh, also want to say thank you for all who participated in our Thanksgiving holiday sharing. Um, thank you to all who brought in food, to those who delivered that food. Uh, I told there was, was great rejoicing when the families received um, everything we were able to give. Uh, please know that we will be doing that again for Christmas. I believe uh, the list will come out this week, so be on the lookout in your email. You'll also be able to find um, some items that we need over in the parish hall and the, and the bulletin board. So I hope we can um, help them have a Merry Christmas as well. We will be doing the same families as well. Um, as I mentioned, we are in the season of Advent. Uh, it's hard to believe, but um, we have a lot of offerings this Advent season. Um, this morning we started our Advent study. Uh, Light of the World by Amy Jill Levine, a book and video study over in the Parish Hall. We'll be doing that for the next three weeks of Advent starting at 9.15. Uh, I hope you can join us. Uh, you, can, you can purchase the book at, at Amazon, uh, a physical copy, or you can par uh, purchase a, 
um, an electronic copy and you can read it on your phone or Kindle. Uh, you can also order it through Barnes and Noble. If you don't have time to read the book throughout the week, that is okay. Uh, the video series is wonderful and you can get so much out of just watching the videos if you can't read the book. Um, so we hope you can join us. And if you miss one week, you aren't going to miss anything by coming next week. Each week is kind of a uh, contained uh, study. So we hope you will join us next week. We'll be studying uh, Mary, the mother of God. So please join us for that. We'll also be doing Compline each Sunday in Advent. We'll be doing Compline in the courtyard right out here. And we'll gather around the fire pit for a time of prayer and fellowship. It is, it is a brief service, 15, 20 minutes, uh, but it really is a lovely service and way to end your Advent Sunday. So please join us for that as well. Also, it being Advent, that means it's time for our Christmas poinsettia order form. Uh, Christmas poinsettias are $11 each, and they help us decorate the, um, the church for Christmas. So if you'd like to give a Christmas poinsettia in memory or in Thanksgiving of something, uh, please fill that out. You can put the uh, green sheet in the, um, the offertory plate, and we will make sure that we, we get that accounted for. Uh, the last day to order that is Sunday, December 19th. That way we can put all the, all the names in the uh, Christmas Eve bulletin. Um, speaking of Christmas Eve, the, the times for Christmas Eve are in your bulletin. On Christmas Eve, we're going to start at 4.30 with a simple outdoor service around the fire pit, singing hymns, uh, reading the Christmas gospel. And that's, that's the service. Uh, it, it, it's going to be brief, but I think it's going to be uh, very moving. Uh, so please, please join us. We'll have uh, hot chocolate and, and apple cider for everybody if, if you can come to that service. We'll have a simple Eucharist. It'll look a lot like this service at 6 p.m. Uh, and here in the church. And then at 8.30, we'll have our festive Eucharist with our choir singing, uh, with a choir singing carols and us joining in. Um, so please join us for that. Christmas Day, we'll have a very simple Christmas Day service Holy Eucharist with no music. It'll be a spoken service. And then on December 26th, we'll be having our lessons and carols. And we will have a Christmas pageant that will be recorded and put on Facebook. So families be on the lookout for that as well. Um, thank you to everyone who has uh, turned in their pledge statement. If you haven't done, if you haven't picked up your envelopes yet, please do so. Uh, the offertory envelopes are in the narthex along with your thank you gift, please pick that up as a small token of our thanks. And if you would like a pledge statement for up to date for 2021, as we're nearing the end of the year, please give Irene a, an email or a call in the office. She'll be happy to, to print that out for you. If, otherwise, we'll send it out in the first uh, week of January of 2022. That way you can have those pledge statements for tax purposes. And if you look in our uh, bulletin, Last, uh, or for Thanksgiving, we did a sock drive for, along with Accenture Federal Services. We're partnering with them again for a coat drive this uh, Christmas and this winter. Uh, please bring in your new or gently used uh, jackets into the parish, or excuse me, to the narthex. We'll have a box set up in there. Um, collection time ends after December 20th. Please try not to bring in anything after the 20th because we don't have anywhere for it to go. We don't have a way to distribute it very easily. So if you could bring those in by the 20th, we'd greatly appreciate it. Any other announcements this morning? Any birthdays or anniversaries? Oh, ben, do you have an announcement? Yes, sir. All right, please.
Any other announcements this morning? All right. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? Oh, Marge, did I see you? Uh, we did mention Marcel in the prayers of the people. He was visiting folks in, in Arizona for Thanksgiving. He did have a seizure. seizure. Um, they found a mass behind his right eye. Um, they did do the surgery. The surgery was successful from what I understand. He is still recovering in the hospital. So please keep Marcel and Lynn in your prayers. Any birthdays or anniversaries? We have, nope, maybe, yep, all right, wonderful. <laughs> all right. So we have a Thanksgiving baby, huh? Yes. All right. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Did you do anything fun to celebrate? All right. Good for you. Happy birthday. And now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Oh, I apologize. We have, it's, it's Advent and... and all things new. Um, and so we do have our Jesse tree. You can see uh, it's up here at the front. So I will invite our Sunday school folks to, to come up and, and decorate our Jesse tree. no earth or sky or sea or animals and then God spoke in the darkness let there be light and right away there was light then God created the earth and the sky and the land the plants and the sea he created the moon the stars in the sky and he created fish and birds and animals and man this took him six days God saw that all he made, and it was very good. And so, on the seventh day, he rested. disobeyed God's warning and God punished Adam and Eve. They would not live forever as God intended. Here's some apples, guys. Lucas, you're next. God saw that mankind was wicked and unkind and, set a and sent a flood to destroy the earth. But Noah and his family pleased the Lord. He told Noah to build an ark and take his family and two of each animal with him. When the flood stopped, God sent a rainbow to show that his love was forever and he would never destroy the earth again. that Abraham would be the father of many descendants, but his wife Sarah seemed unable to have children, so Abraham believed he would die childless. God assured Abraham that he would have his son with Sarah, 
God told him that the descendants of Abraham would be numerous as the stars in the sky. The Lord cared for Sarah, and he did for her what he, he had promised. Sarah became pregnant, and she gave birth to a son for Abraham and his, in his old age. Everything happened at the time God had said it would. They named their son Isaac. God is uh, is always with us. Jacob Jacob was on a long journey when he stopped to spend the night. As he slept, Jacob had a dream. In his dream, there was a ladder that reached from the ground all the way up up to heaven. There were angels running up and down the ladder. He looked and saw God himself standing at the top of the ladder. God spoke to Jacob and told him that he was going to bless him and his people, that he would watch over him and keep him wherever he went. Okay. That's our last one. Thank you so much to our Sunday school and to, to Danielle for uh, helping us relive not only the story of the birth of Jesus, but every all the events that led up to the birth of Jesus, uh, and helping us remind us that it is one big story that we are a part of. So thank you all for all your hard work and your wonderful reading. We look forward to hearing what our other Sunday school classes uh, have to tell us in the upcoming weeks. And now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
I also want to thank uh, Becky Smith for, for, for providing such lovely harp music this morning. And also thank you to our bell ringers. It really is uh, the sound of the season here at St. Stephen's. So thank you all for the music that you provide for our Advent services. And now our service continues with Holy Eucharist in Prayer B, which can be found in your bulletin. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Stephen, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. <coughs> Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. of the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Please be seated.
in prayer for spiritual communion for those who cannot be with us in person this morning. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Amen. And let us all say our post-communion prayer together. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Son of Righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.